Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to Year 12 Physics. We're kicking off advanced mechanics, starting with projectile motion. This is a neat extension on all the SUVAT stuff that's been covered previously. But we're moving away from linear motion by adding an extra dimension. I know, spooky. Specifically, we'll be looking at projectiles. Think throwing a ball off a cliff, cannons firing, basically anything that falls in an arc. This will help us cover the syllabus points up on the video page. To get through it all, we'll start by looking back at how to resolve vectors into their horizontal and vertical components. Then, we'll take a look at the assumptions we use to make everything much more manageable. Finally, we'll see how each of these components behaves. Lots to get through, so let's get started. We'll kick it off by taking a moment and going back a little to when we talked about resolving vectors. This method allows us to take a complicated vector and split it up into two simpler vectors in defined directions. We need to apply this to 2D motion, where our directions specifically are horizontal and vertical. All the questions you'll see in the exams are referring to projectile motion, where you have an object moving along horizontally, but also upwards and downwards, accelerating due to gravity. In these cases, to deal with the problems you're given, you should split the vectors into horizontal and vertical components. It simplifies the problem massively. It's worth noting that a lot of these questions also ask you to give the overall resultant velocity of something. So, after you've split the situation into two components, you'll need to add the perpendicular vectors back together to find the overall magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. If you're having a head-scratching moment right now, I would jump back to your Year 11 content to brush up on resolving vectors. We'll be doing some examples of this in a later video. OK, so we know how we would split the problem up. But before we get going with some questions, we have to introduce a couple of assumptions. Firstly, and most importantly, we say that the only force that acts on something moving and falling is gravity. This might sound a bit obvious, since it's just flying through the air. The catch comes from this air, though. It's lovely for us, you know, providing oxygen, allowing life on Earth to thrive. But it's less lovely for motion through the air, because of air resistance. This is basically a force that acts against the motion of an object, slowing it down. Fortunately for us, we can just ignore all of this by using our assumption. It's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind, though, and we'll touch on it briefly in the practical video later on. Then, the second assumption is that gravity is constant. This is far more accurate than the previous one. Although gravity does change a little bit with height, the changes are minuscule at any scales we'll be looking at. So those are your assumptions. No air resistance and constant gravity. Alright, so we know that we can treat any vector as two separate parts. In this case, horizontal and vertical. But you might be thinking, OK, that's fine, but how does that help me when the overall vector is changing? When there's acceleration in the vertical direction? If the object goes slightly up first and then down, do I need to split the vector at every single point to work out the horizontal and vertical motion? Well, physics is on your side on this one, and you only need to resolve the vector once. Then, each of the components actually develops independently of one another through time. So, you can just treat it as two separate linear motion problems, one for the vertical motion and one for the horizontal motion, and then bring it all back together at the end. Let's look in a little more detail about the two components you'll be studying. OK, let's think about the horizontal travels of an object. For example, a ball being thrown off a cliff. Once you have thrown the ball, the only force acting on that ball is gravity, which, hopefully blowing no minds, we can quite confidently say acts downwards, in the vertical direction. By our assumption that there's no air resistance, we can say that there's no force in the horizontal direction. Thinking about it, if you have no force, then you have no acceleration. So in your horizontal direction, 
you're actually travelling at a constant speed. In this case, the SUVAT equations are useless. I mean, they still work, but they're overly complicated and will all lead you to the same conclusion. Speed equals distance over time. And that's a nice and simple equation we're all very happy using. In terms of the vertical component, you essentially have a freefall situation. It is a little counterintuitive, but it doesn't matter whether you drop something or throw something out horizontal. There is the same acceleration downwards. Still, 9.81 meters per second squared due to gravity. You might have heard of the famous firing a bullet and dropping a bullet problem. It says that if you fire a bullet horizontally and drop the bullet from the same height, then they'll hit the ground at the same time. Granted, one will be hundreds of meters away horizontally, but they do in fact hit the ground at the exact same moment. If you doubt me, Mythbusters did the experiment. Check it out. But anyway, you can basically ignore whatever is happening horizontally and just treat the vertical part of the problem as if you had an object traveling straight down. Here, you do need to use the SUVAT equations, as you would with freefall examples. But it's a simpler problem. Okay, so you might be thinking I've just made you even more confused by introducing loads of new things but not actually concluding them. But there is a method to the madness, I promise. Make sure you're comfortable with resolving vectors into components and putting them back together through vector addition. And how we treat the two different components. And then the assumptions we use to make our lives easier. And then, then we can start putting the maths into the mix. Have fun with all of that, and I'll see you next time.